sexual exploitation connecting the dots is our next module as we continue to calibrate a way to recovery from this scourge, this serious problem. To be deliver our next module, a professional who has clearly never relented on excellence. She's a federally certified instructor and consultant for the Department of Homeland Security Federal Law Enforcement Training Center. She has also successfully completed the DHS Drug Task Force Supervising Training Program and is recognized as a member of ILETA, that's the International Law Enforcement and Educators Association. She is a recipient of several awards, including the Alpha Kappa Alpha Global Impact Award for her work in human trafficking. She has received the Alabama Black Achievers Entrepreneur of the Year Award from Regions Financial Corporation and the Oliver Robinson Foundation Award for Professional Development Evidence-Based Services for her poster presentation defining the role of minority health response to human trafficking victimization and these among many others. She was also selected to serve as an Alabama commissioner for the Samuel DeWitt Proctor Conference, which held hearings on mass incarceration and social justice and human rights violations in nine states in the U.S. and produced the report, Bearing Witness, a Nation in Chains. She has served as a crime analyst for local, statewide, and national media, including ABC, CBS, NBC, Fox, CNN and Trinity Broadcast Network. She's also an established writer for local and national newspapers, magazines, international publications. You get the drift? She is also, by the way, a blogger. Please welcome Ms. Sunny Slaughter. very bad. How can I go behind her? I'm, okay, you were going to hear from me, but I quit now. Hello, how are you? Thank you for having me. It is truly a pleasure and an honor to be here. Archbishop, Bishop, the Archbishop left me? Really? Oh. Thank you all. We're going to cue that presentation. Okay. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the intersection of child pornography and human trafficking. I'm really tall for my size, so I'm going to bring this here. And marginalized, masked, and missed. I am actually glad that I um, am coming behind. Next slide, please. This wonderful woman here. Because I'm going to ask for some liberties I am not, of course, as you know, a Trinidadian woman. Did I say that right? Because I've been trying to practice. Okay. <laughs> but um, I'm going to talk about your culture, your history. So I'm going to ask your liberties and forgiveness in advance. Because I'm going to tell the truth. Not like my sister just did. But, so, before I get started, I also wanted to tell you, I take this all very personal, because in 2003, I found out I was married to a child molester. And my daughter was seven years old, and I had to hold her hand during a sexual assault exam. So this is real for me, be it pornography, or human trafficking, or sexual violence. So this is all personal. So I'm going to ask you to take a look at this slide and tell me, are you responding to pornography here or are you reacting to it? Next slide. Because you need to respond and not react. But based on what you saw earlier, what are you doing? You're reacting, right? Pornography and human trafficking. How many of you all know about human trafficking? 
is it taking place here? Oh, everybody in the room. Everybody. Okay. So you've already had this conversation, right? Have you done anything about it? Oh. So then how are you going to respond to your pornography problem, which is so intertwined? So you already know that human trafficking is the largest, one of the largest criminal enterprises, right? Where human beings are sold as a commodity for profit. And what about pornography? What's happening there? If you're number one in Google, same thing, right? So children, adults, bodies, material being sold. Okay. And the one thing that we do know about both of these is that an image or a person can be sold, traded, and exploited across multiple trafficking schemes over and over and over again, making the trafficking of persons more lucrative than what? The drugs, because we talked about drugs, firearms. But I found it really interesting because this has been a great conference because you just didn't talk about the victims, the direct victims. You have also talked a lot about families here and communities. And that's the one thing that's always missing in the human trafficking conversation because we so focus on individual victims. But this is criminal activity. We've laughed, we've talked, we've talked about brain activity, we have talked about drugs, we have talked about addiction, but I want you to know that this is criminal activity. This is a crime. So tell me, are you responding or reacting to the criminal activity that is taking place in your homes, schools, communities, and businesses? Do you know what the law says? I'm not talking about what the words say, what the law says. Because this is crossing multiple schemes. Next slide, please. So when you think about pornography, I want you to think about child trafficking schemes, that there's prostitution involved, that there's some type of forced fraud and coercion. You have escort services here. You all know this, right? But you know Pornography is all tied into this. When I was coming here from the airport, you know, I was, they were driving me. First of all, I had to get used to the fact that we were driving on the opposite side. Okay. And I am happy to have Trinidad stamped in my very new passport because I intend to come back again. <laughs> very new. I got a new passport and my first stamp is Trinidad. So that means you're gonna see me a lot. So it's in your commercial businesses, your residential brothels. So when you're having this pornography taking place, some of it is filmed for commercial purposes and sold. Some of it is just for people's pleasure, but it's all happening. And how are they getting victims? We have Miss Cena. You know, I done met people in here already like I'm from here. Our, our national president for the PTA, she asked a question. How are we going to fix this? How do we get parents to, to make a difference? And how do we get them to change, right? Okay, well, how are you going to do it? Have you asked the question why people are not engaging in this conversation? Why aren't parents having this conversation with their children? It's not just because they don't want to. But maybe there's a reason why. So before I go on, let me say this. There may be some of you in this room who have been victims of human trafficking, who have been victims of pornography. And if that is the case, and at any time that you feel uncomfortable because we've talked about this all day, feel free to step outside of the room. And then somebody can have a conversation with you because we are all sitting in here like we don't have any victimization. Did you know that I was a victim? Did you know that I was a survivor? Okay, so there are some of you in here, and we're just walking around like everything is okay, sitting in here like we're real comfortable with this conversation. So could that be the reason why some people are not having that conversation in their own homes? Maybe it has to do with they don't have the level of education. Or, 
as I got up and said earlier, maybe they don't know the law. Because we have talked about everything except the fact that people can go to jail for this. Even children. You have high crime rate here in Trinidad. Because I don't come any place unless I do my homework. But I came to Trinidad, walked through immigration, and some people from here, because I made sure I had some friends here, they said, well, you can go out at night, but don't go out too late at night and don't go out by yourself because of the crime rate. Well, I'm in Birmingham. I don't go out by myself unless I'm packing with my gun on my hip and one on my ankle. I'm just saying. I'm from Trenton, New Jersey. I know what the wild, wild west looks like. But part of the trafficking schemes, as you can see, is tied into phone sex companies, internet, restaurants, construction sites. You have a very good industry here. When I was coming down the road from the airport, I saw all of the billboards, all of the advertisement. But you know what some of that advertisement was saying to me? Because when you are here, this is sometimes what you miss. Just like I miss that child predator being in my house, you miss what's right in front of you. I saw all the advertisement, and I bet you, I said, they sure are like Kentucky Fried Chicken here. How much does it pay, Kentucky Fried Chicken pay? An hour. Anybody know? Huh? They say 15, did you say? Does it pay minimum wage? Oh, and you sure have a lot of Kentucky Fried Chicken here. Okay, what about, uh, is it d the the... The selling? Did Jesus sell? Yeah, that too. Yeah. Okay. You have a lot of signs for that too. I mean, coming down just that road that I, and then everything is all windy. I said, and then the people are selling things out in the road. Now, why are they doing that? We're the big time jobs. So, how often do you have child brides here? Oh, because I was looking at the law. Didn't you just change some laws? Like, because, see, before you could get married and, and then your age for, oh, okay. So tell me what you're doing about that part. So I keep asking you to tell me stuff. Are you responding or reacting? Next slide, please. So this is what child pornography and the intersection of child trafficking looks like. So you have children and youth in the middle. And I'm saying children and youth because we already know that we have adults because we wouldn't have children and youth if we didn't have adults. And the age of children and youth are different. Their mentality is different. Prosecution is also different. Okay? But this is what you are looking at in Trinidad when you start thinking about child pornography is directly tied to sex trafficking, domestic minor sex trafficking, or commercial sexual exploitation. It is also directly tied to labor trafficking, but we don't talk about that because we don't think it's sexy enough. I asked you how much do people make when they work at Kentucky Fried Chicken? What is your minimum wage? Do you know? Does everybody know? Okay. I, I'm, I hope so. So are any of you working with people who have been formerly incarcerated? Single mothers, parents of low income, foster children. When you're working with them, do they know how much minimum wage is? Are you telling them? You're saying that they do. Are you telling them? Okay. Who said yes? Stand up. So you're telling them and then you're verifying when they get a job that they're getting, okay. Can people survive here off a of minimum wage? Oh, so then that's why we have labor trafficking. That's why we have sex trafficking. That's why we have child pornography. Are you seeing everything that I see every day? And you're probably saying, yeah, I see it. But are you responding or are you reacting? And your societal norms, I'm going to talk about you bad. So we're having a conversation on pornography. We've had a conversation, you all, on human trafficking. So, But your societal norms has carnival. 
Is that not correct? Now see, I know I might not have said it right. I wanted to come, but I'm a little too thick and I couldn't get in one of them little G-strings. So I said I couldn't come. But our good doctor just told us and she actually showed us a video. And while she was showing that video, you know what I was doing? I was doing that law enforcement thing and I was conducting a little recon. And I was looking at the number of you in this audience on this topic that were smiling, that were laughing, that were engaged. So tell me, y'all gonna be mad at me at the end of this, how you gonna talk about child pornography to a parent? And you just became complicit when you were laughing, smiling, and engaging. I'm calling you out. It was funny what was happening but this is what your children see. So tell me if you responded or did you just react? So how are you going to talk to parents? Because if the children, if you just did it, and then so you know the children are out there winding and grinding too. Some of y'all participating in that clapping that the doctor just talked about. And she's already gone over the family dynamics. I'm so glad you did most of my work for me because I was going to talk about the fact that you have a high divorce rate because I did say I did my homework before I came, right? I've been married twice. The second one was the child molester. He does not have a name, but he is doing a comfortable 20 years in the New Jersey State Prison for sex offenders. But the pain in all of that is not just what he did to my daughter, but what happened to the entire family. So what we are talking about today is not just one victim. This is what is happening to your country. This is what is happening to all of you. This is what is happening to your children. This is the work that you have to stop reacting to and then really come up with a real response. You have to be unified and connected. Next slide, please. What about your services? Because what I see and what I know based on the data, because and the fact that all of you are here in this room, this says a lot. There are so many of you here. That means you care. Because this Saturday, you could be doing anything, but you are here because you care. Because this is an issue that matters. I need us to start thinking about moving vulnerable populations from the margins to the middle. Because right now, all of your vulnerable populations are at the margins. Because we are reacting to what has been going on for so long. How many young people do we have in the room over there? I saw y'all. Exactly. See, this is what you do when you pay attention. Did you all know that they were here? Okay. Where are you all from? Oh, let's give them a hand because they showed up. But you are too far from the middle. You are on the margins, and you need to be in the middle. So the next time you come to something like this, I'm going to need you not to be that far out. I'm going to need you to be right here. Y'all got that? Okay. Because this right here is who you need to talk to to change the dynamics that you're trying to work through. Next slide. These are your vulnerable populations. And my other sister just talked about child welfare services, but you call it what here? I know, Children's Authority. So now you have all of these folks under one umbrella, right? Okay, in the United States of America, 80% of the children in child welfare services are victims of human trafficking. Yes, they have the largest number. So you know it might fluctuate between 70, 80. It's the largest number of victims of confirmed cases of human trafficking come from child welfare services. How many of you work with children from foster care? Raise your hand. Nobody? 
So if you're an educator and you're in school, you, you don't have any children in foster care in your school? Oh, okay. So you do? Okay. This is where some of the problem is. How many of you all work with detention centers? I know you're educators and policy makers. Anybody writing policy for detention centers? See, these are where your vulnerable populations are for children who are victims of child pornography because they don't have any money. Their parents don't have any money. They're in foster care. They're in shelters, residential treatment facilities. How many of those we have in here? People working with residential treatment. We're talking about addictions. Okay. Because the children in residential treatment facilities, whether it's in the United States or here, are often the victims that we are currently missing. Are you asking questions of the adults and the people that you come in contact with? How often they view porn? Are they exposed to it? Have they been victims of violence? Have they been victims of sexual violence? And when you get a yes, that means that can, those questions continue. Transitional living groups. And the one thing that's different here than in the United States is that I am looking out at a room filled with people that look like me. I'm amazed. This is not a conversation that we are having like this in the United States of America. I'm a truth bearer. I don't care about hurting people's feelings because the truth usually does hurt people's feelings. But the other thing is the number of people that look like me that are standing up, talking in audiences that don't look like you, almost zero. But when you look at the data, confirmed, and I always like to confirm because that's that law enforcement thing. The confirmed data says that the victims of human trafficking, sexual violence, are minorities. So you all should give yourself a hand because you are in a room with people that are really committed. Next slide, please. Give yourself a hand. Yeah, you need to give yourself a hand. Social determinants. As I said when I was coming here, this is some of our problems. The social determinants, the intersectionality of poverty, social economics, all of them impact child pornography, human trafficking, how people live, where they live. I saw a lot of things in the community just coming over here that made me say, we got a lot of problems in Trinidad. I think I'm going to come back a lot. And I just drove down one area. Of course, everything doesn't look like that, but it doesn't have to. Education. All of these things matter. Next slide, please. So this is a slide that I created. So this is what you're looking at. This is what thrives and drives porn culture and human trafficking. When you have health disparities, that is access to health care and access to mental health. And as the doctor just talked about, STIs, sexual violence, all of these things drive porn culture and human trafficking. Poverty is driven by all of this. When people can't feed themselves, they can't take care of themselves. They do what is necessary, even when it's uncomfortable. When they lack the education, you wanted to know why parents are not engaged? Because some parents don't have the education to have the conversation. They didn't have the conversation with them. Nobody spoke to them. Nobody asked them were they victims. And when they were told somebody they were victims, they said, keep quiet. This is the family secret. This is why they can't have the conversation, even if they wanted to. They haven't moved past their own depression, their own PTSD. They haven't moved past their own victimization. They are vulnerable. They suffer from bipolar. They suffer from the addictions. This is a race, ethnicity, culture, linguistic, faith, family, gender, sexual identity conversation. Some people don't want to have this conversation. Some people can't have this conversation. And what about your social justice? What does it say? What do your laws say? What is happening when children are being picked up or when adults are being picked up? One of our presenters talked about the fact that they want to lower the amount of time that someone receives for child pornography. What happens 
when the person who took pictures of you, you now see on the streets. Because those images never go away. They remain on the internet. They make it to the United States. They come back. Can you imagine what it's like if you were the victim of pornography, child or adult, and somebody walked up to you and said, I know you. And you said, how do you know me? Because I saw your picture on the internet. How do you think you would feel? And the environmental issues. We never think about, we just had a hurricane. Not here. But when hurricanes and natural disasters happen, that increases the probability that crime will increase. That people who are already vulnerable will become even more vulnerable. And that someone will take advantage of them. My girlfriend is an attorney, and she called me, this is in the States, and she says, I got a problem. She says, my nine-year-old stepdaughter was found taking pictures of her vagina. And I'm going to use real words because we're all grown-ups, even y'all over there. You heard that word before. And it was a man who had sent her pictures via her electronic device to show her what he wanted to see. And he said, this is what I want you to send back to me. And she was sending those back. Her sister came in and happened to catch her. Well, the police officers that responded didn't do what they needed to do. And when she called me, I said, well, you just let me know when you want me to do something. And what I was going to do was what I wound up having to do was contact the captain of the sheriff's department and say, we got a problem because law enforcement actually left the phone with the mother, the birth mother. I said, well, what about if the birth mother was the perp? Because we talk about our children and we have all day to day being exposed to pornography by families, but is it a crime? Do you know? We have yet to talk about the criminal aspect of, do, does anyone in here know? whether that's a crime. And if it is, and you find out about it, who are you reporting it to? Because if you're holding on to it, you have just become complicit in criminal activity. We cannot say that we're going to do something and then we find out something and do nothing. Next slide, please. And I'm going really fast. Okay. So in the United States, and you all tell me this, this is the media and messaging of the face of human trafficking. Anybody ever seen the movie Taken? Oh gosh, y'all seen it over here too? Okay, <laughs> I know. People keep acting like this is a third world country. I figured that you probably had. All right, so when you saw the movie, did anybody get excited and say, I talk a lot in front of young people and parents, and I go in the room, and I say, how many people saw the movie Taken? They all raised their hands, and I said, did you know it was a movie? Because, see, there are not that many people taken like that. They don't have to come and snatch somebody off the streets and after they... I wasn't worried about nobody snatching me when I got here off the plane. I really wasn't. They don't have to snatch you. You know why? Because most of us have left the front door and the back door open. How many of you have internet? Okay. How many of your kids have cell phones? And it might not be your child, but it's a child in your family. Somebody, oh, well, they don't have to come and snatch anybody off the street like taking. They're already in your house. And the children walk freely out the front door and the back door. So nobody's being taken. And in all three of those movies, anybody notice something about the movies that made national media? Who do you see? I'm a part of the D Department of Homeland Security um, campaign, the blue campaign, the original one. You know what has me mad? Anybody see any children that look minority? What are these people, what are these movies talking about? These are all young, beautiful white girls. What about the black girls that are missing? Everybody know about Boko Haram. But I was intrigued and amazed that everybody said, bring back our girls. And I was thinking, well, what about the girls that's missing in your neighborhood? Where was your outrage for them? How many girls in your neighborhoods and communities have gone missing 
and there was a movie made, or you put up signs, or you started an internet campaign. Oh yeah, this is a conversation about race, diversity, culture, and ethnicity. This is a conversation about the truth. It's a conversation about porn. It's a conversation about the fact that you want parents to have a conversation and you want to change some dynamics. But did you ever think that these people don't think that they're victims? Because nobody has told them. They don't see a movie of themselves. Unless they see a movie like the doctor just showed and everybody there looks like them and they're humping and grinding. That is the movie that they see. That's not victimization. That's our societal norm. That's our culture. Next slide, please. I know y'all not going to like me after this. So this is the mass. <laughs> so this is the mass. This is the covering. This is about the children who are in foster care here, not in the United States. This is the children who have aged out. These are the runaways and the throwaways. This is the justice-involved youth, the homeless, the transient. And I know we're in a Christian environment, but this is about the LGBTQ, too. Because you might not like it, but they are still victims. And Christ never walked away from anybody in the name of, okay? Because he's still with me. And let me tell you, he should have left me a long time ago. What about our individuals with disabilities? I have a lot of educators in here. Zena, this one's for you. What are we doing to address our intellectual and developmentally delayed, delayed individuals who are disengaged and who somebody might not think would be victims of pornography? They're vulnerable, right? sometimes more vulnerable than anybody else. And you know how difficult it is to take care of somebody like that and their parents need money and some of the things that they will do. We haven't talked about familia, trafficking, pornography, and criminal activity, but it is real. And even if it's not against the law, it's a problem and it contributes. Next slide, please. I'm trying to hurry. So race, ethnicity, culture, and faith all matter because we have to start viewing things through a culturally competent lens. I look black, right? A little bit. Well, I'm actually brown, crayon color, something like that. But I'm not from Trinidad. So how well do you think I would go over if I went into the community and I did not have any understanding of the culture? It happens all the time in America. Does it happen here? Yes, it does. It happens. Where people who are not from where you're from, you know, they say coming where I'm, I'm from, and they go in and they try to tell you how to do something. I went to South Dakota and it was a room filled. I was training probation officers and they were all Caucasian. And like I said, I did my homework. And I said, well, let me ask you something. Who, what do your victims look like? Native American. I said, so how is it working for the white people to go onto the reservation and tell the Native Americans what to do? How's that working for you? Do you understand the culture? And the, do you understand the culture of pornography? Do you understand the culture of crime and how it thrives? Because if you don't, then we are still reacting and not responding. Next slide, please. We miss all of the opportunities to make a difference when we don't understand how we, us as individuals, and how we collectively as professionals and how we, as a faith, and how we, as women and men, have contributed to what continues to happen to our future. In some form or fashion, we have contributed. Every day when I get up to have a conversation about this poignant topic, I think about the fact that I couldn't save my own daughter. She is now married. And I'm a nana. 
Oh, I just love my grandbaby so much. I just love her. She's cute. She looks like me. But my daughter said, Mom, there's a girl that was four years old, and I think you should try to get involved in this case. Because there was a time when my daughter was so angry at me. But she had to come back on in. She's the prodigal daughter. Come on. But there were so many missed opportunities. And what you were doing can sometimes there be a missed opportunity because we haven't had, we haven't started from the bottom to look at what's really around us. We want to make change at the top. But we really have to start where the foundation is and see how we can then rise up a nation of children to make a difference. Next slide, please. So this is what I like to talk about really quick. Tick response teams. It's something that I have been talking about for a while. How many of you know about trauma-informed care? Okay, it's in the SAMHSA book, chapter 2. Okay. And it talks about trauma. And if you don't have it, then I'll share it with you. But trauma-informed care response teams are designed, and these are multiple disciplines. So right here in this room, you have enough people to create teams of individuals who can respond and not just react. With the expertise here in this room, don't tell me you're retired. Where's my assistant? Oh, yeah, you sit back there talking about you was retired. You ain't retired. I told you I'm bringing you out of retirement. We have a dentist right here in the room. We have young people in the room. We have national president of the PTA. We have a gentleman that asked about policy development. That's you. Parents, what can we do? We know we're going to talk about solutions. But right here in this room, this is what you have this is what you start with. This is where you make change. You're the trauma-informed care team. You have faith. You have law enforcement. You have the means. And you can find the money because you have the expertise right here. You don't have to keep running out. Create it right here. You ask Dawn, well, what can we do? Here you are. So by the time you leave here, everybody should have a have a plan, like a real one, in writing. So tomorrow, when you come to my workshop, we ain't gonna, I'm not going to be speaking and presenting PowerPoints. We're going to come up with a plan because that's part of the problem. We have conferences, and we don't leave with a plan. So y'all going to have some homework because I'm going to come back and check. Team members who can work with all victims of human trafficking, pornography, sexual violence, all of the tie ins Everybody can do that in here, right? Even somebody who's been a victim. Now you're going to be a survivor. But we have no time for that other stuff. Who has services? How many service providers do we have in here? We don't have anybody that provides services? Oh, I was going to say, because everybody should say, I provide some type of service. Okay, so everybody's going to get together and tell, we're going to find out what services are here. We're going to vet and verify your services that you actually exist. Next slide, please. Y'all fall asleep on me? Okay, so then we're going to check some boxes tomorrow about maltreatment and abuse of children. Response and interventions. Then we're going to come up with some policies, some practices, and some processes. Yeah, we're not just going to have a conference because y'all going to take this information, keep it to yourselves, and not do anything unless you charge with something. So tomorrow we're going to have a charge because we have to keep children safe. They need to be free from trauma. We need to move forward. We can't keep having a meeting to have another meeting to have another meeting. That's ridiculous. If you are ready, we just need to respond and stop reacting to everything. Somebody can say, I need to do this. But don't tell me, okay, that we have to have another meeting to figure out how we're going to do this. No, we just need to do something. Next slide. We need to have some policies and procedures. Wherever you currently are, what do the policies and procedures look like so you can start doing things? 
And if your policies and procedures are not responsive to pornography, that means you need to write some. Does anybody here in the work that you're doing currently have a policy specific for pornography? Okay, because you knew you were coming to the conference, right? Nobody looked. That's, that, okay, we're going to have to do better. Okay, we're going to have to do better. You knew you were coming to the conference. You should have checked. What are we already doing? Everybody has to have an assignment. Check and see if you currently have a policy for the work that you're doing. Do you have one in dentistry? Where are you at? Okay, we need a policy. We need to just write one. We need to find out what the law is and get it done. We don't need to have a meeting to have another meeting to figure out what we're going to say. Next slide. And then we need to have some comprehensive training. This is your first training. We're going to keep going with the training. But then you need to assess the people that you're working with. What is the population that you're working with? Educators. You're working with children, right? Okay, so you already know who your population is. We already know that children come with a myriad of vulnerabilities. All we have to do is list them out. And then we need to move forward. How do we put into place policies that effectuate practices that move people from the margins to the middle? Because you all already know that this is a problem. It's been a problem in Trinidad. It just didn't get new. How long, Bishop, I saw you how many years ago? Oh, see? It's, our, it's almost 2017. I met Bishop 2014. You all been working on this two years? We've been having three. Okay, so three years. We don't have time. We're not having, not having any more meetings. We're done with the meetings. It's time to move. Okay? And I'm being serious. This is already, you already know that this is happening. Let's get started. Next slide, please. Okay, and then we need to have some processes. How are we going to change this? And what does that change look like? So we already know, Dawn has already told you. They have a what? Media campaign. Here's your media expertise right here. Ask her. Who is she talking to? What is she doing? She told you already, right? She's going to send you some information. For 12 people, Google, things like that. We need to know. Google can tell you who's hitting it, right? That ISP. They can tell you where the hits are coming from. If it's one area of town, that's where we need to focus on. What area of town is getting the most hits for pornography? Start there. We just need to get it done. We've been waiting too long. We don't need to have another conversation just need to respond. Next slide. I know I'm bossy, right? My kids say that too. And most importantly, we need to do no harm. We need to be transparent. When I got up here, I told you that I had a daughter that was seven who was molested by the man that I was married to. I do this, and I missed it. The wolf was in my house. He was the armor bearer for the bishop at church. Now, the only reason why I'm standing here is because I didn't kill him. And that is because God himself, not his representative, came down in me and said, I have something else for you to do. It was the most painful thing that I could not even breathe. I'm being transparent. For almost 13 years, okay, so I want you to do the math. I told you it happened in 20, 2003. It is 2016. 13 years, my family has been in a spiral. I had guilt. I had everything. My daughter was acting out. I have a 14-year-old son that's in the behavioral health facility. This is me being transparent because I need you all to do something. I want to be able to bring my kids here. I don't want to have to walk around with, with they have guns, I have guns. I want to do that. I want to know that everybody in this room I can see later. I want to introduce you to introduce me to your children. I don't want them to be perping on other kids because I need you to respond and stop reacting. I'm being transparent. The pain, the guilt, 
It is what drives me. I'm going to need you all to have some guilt about what you haven't done so we can get some things done. We can't blame it on anybody else. I could not blame what happened on, to my daughter just on him because I missed something. I still don't know what I missed, but it's a good thing I missed him messing with my daughter. But we have to do something. We have to say something. And we can't say the something in here to one another because we already know it's a problem. We need to say it out there. We need to tell children this is a problem. We can't wait for their parents to come in. If the parents don't come, you still have an audience with the children. You can't complain that, okay, we can't get the parents to come in and talk about sex. Okay, talk to the kids. Somebody has to do it. When are you going to be that somebody? This is a quote. It takes the courage of the collective conscious that refuses to contribute to the continued unethical behaviors of individuals, organizations, and systems that ignore the needs of marginalized minorities, children, who are at increased vulnerability for human trafficking schemes, which are tied into pornography. That's a long quote, but it's the truth. You need to be a voice and a champion for all children who are tricked, traumatized, and trafficked. Because if they have a pornography background, the likelihood of them not being trafficked is almost zero. Next slide. So now, I ask you, what are you really willing to do for others? You here, don't talk about it, be about it. The name of my TEDx talk is what are you really willing to do for others? That is what Harry Belafonte said to me in 2013 when he gave me my award. And I told him what happened to my family. Not just the part that I've told you. I'll tell you the rest tomorrow. That means you've got to come back. But the rest, I thought the first part was going to kill me. But I sure thought the second part was going to take me out. I thought it was going to completely destroy my family. So this is what I am really willing to do for others. I am really willing to be transparent. I am really willing to come back and help, be it Skype, in person. But I really need you all to be willing to do something for others. If you showed up here, you need to show up everywhere. Thank you. as we could possibly get this weekend. Ms. Slaughter, thank you so much for jolting us. We do appreciate it wholly.